Lancasters eventually carried no less than 22,000 pounds, the 10-ton Grand Slam bomb. The gunner suddenly called out, there's a JU-88 coming in, Skipper. I said, OK, give me your orders as soon as you can, what to do. He's in charge then. And he said, prepare to port, prepare to dive port, prepare to dive port, prepare to dive port. And as he said that, we were hit. And he also fired at that time. It was a vulnerable position. I can't deny that. Yeah, that's the job you were there to do. You did it. Taylor and Charlie, as we call him, he was the fall guy. I think there were more casualties with rear gunners than any of the other crew members. Isolated in his turret, the rear gunner had barely enough room to move. Most attacks came from the rear, and he was often the first casualty. Yeah, well, first we started uh, initial training, sort of foot drill and uh, how to live in the RAF. Uh, that was in London. And uh, unfortunately, when we were in there, we were in a block of flats, and there was uh, three... Uh, bunk beds in each room in these block so there were six bods in each room and a big block of flats and they dropped a bomb one morning they dropped a bomb right the top. No, we don't know how many got killed because we all had to evacuate and we were never allowed back in so we don't it was never spoken about and then you went on to a course uh, uh, learning how to assemble the gun how to feed it, uh, aircraft recognition, and we had to learn the wingspans of the aircraft because the the dot ring and bead, knowing the, the aircraft wingspan, we could calculate the distance it was away from us. Snag was our uh, Browning 303s had got a 400 yard range. The uh, Messerschmitts had got cannons with an 800. Uh, you had to gauge when he was in his range because we used the corkscrew. That was our biggest weapon. Uh, corkscrew, you sort of dive left and turn around and hopefully, if you timed it right, he couldn't follow you around. If you was too early, he'd follow you around. If you were too late, you wouldn't be there. <laughs> of course, uh, there, where your target was the main thing, uh, some targets you've got a lot of ack uh, and a lot of fighter activities and another one you probably wouldn't see a fighter. Uh, it just depends where you're going and also surprise because we only flew in very small formations, uh, three, five at the most. If I'm in my turret here, they usually usually come from the either the port quarter or starboard quarter down at you. You see, so it was Oh, massive seconds really and we had um, one in four bullets it they, what, they used to light up get hot and you can imagine when you shot you had a stream of light and that's you lay your distance in front of him along that stream so it was a very very calculated job you were the main armament. You see, the, the mid-upper was very restricted on range because the uh, fins, they had automatic cutouts on the turret, you see. And it, you could fire along and stop. So, you know, of course, that, that was uh, not really the best of uh, positions to be in. The rear gunner was the main armament. Uh, you know, if, if they could knock the rear gunner out, the aircraft was virtually theirs. I did 15, uh, 13 operations, and uh, the 13th, of course, was the, uh, whether it was a lucky or unlucky one, <laughs> but luckily we, we got through them all, yeah.